Luckily, I have this Bell & Howell Filmo sound. It, um, it has an optical, you can see it has an optical um, sound feature on it for an optical sound uh, strip, which is actually a density type uh, optical reader because it has the little slot. Uh, the, light, the light goes through a little slot. It doesn't have a uh, circular one. The circular type are the uh, area type of optical sound. Here's the uh, audio section, obviously. You can see, luckily when you turn it on the first position forward, the lamp doesn't come on, but the lamp on the audio does. And um, of course the last thing I want to do is break that bulb. Imagine trying to find that bulb today. And you can see, hear the uh, audio clearly. Inside of this um, pickup, the lens, the little, the little lens which is focusing on here, is actually a slot. And the uh, amplitude type pickups, I mean the area type pickups, have a, have a circular one. This is a slot, so I'm hoping, I, I believe that this, that means that that's a um, density type. So I think that'll be, I think that may work. I just have to now take enough length of film off and run it around our, um, our little flywheel here and I'm going to manually move it and see what we can hear. I'm going to manually move it and see what we can hear, try different speeds. Pretty exciting really, I have no idea what's going to be on there. None of us do. The sprockets it doesn't really actually you know there's a cool thing about this I realized there's no sprockets on the sound portion of this so if I can't get a sound out of it one way I should be able to flip the, the, the film around I should be able to hear two of the tracks I mean if I can line up with at least two of the tracks this goes through here goes around that idler and it goes around this idler I don't want to break this film. I mean, yeah, I doubt it's anything really important, but if it turns out that it is, I don't want to mess it up. I'm kind of twisting it a little there. So if I come up here, it goes like that, wraps around the bottom, and there we go. That, that should pretty much line it up. If I pull the film out like this, you can see the flywheel moving here. All right, let's give it a shot. Sounds like static. That's not good. Turn the volume up a little here. Lower. Put this closer to the speaker so you can maybe hear the speaker. The speaker's up here, of course. Try this a little bit more. Just sounds like static so far. That's slow. to run it this way because I can't line it up so good. Wait. Here's slow backwards. Here's fast backwards. Alright, nothing so far. I'm going to try to flip it over and do it again. I'm going to flip the film over and do it again to try to, try to hit the other track. 
before I reverse the film, you know, put the sprockets on the other side, I decided to just move down the reel on the optical reader because it looked as though there actually is on that track a difference in the pulses, as though the, the, the part that was staticky that I first tried is just kind of like plain with no, no pulses, but then this part of the tape actually has little pulses, so I have a feeling there's data on here, whereas in the other part it may have just been, it may be that this tape does change over its length, and that might have just been static. So we'll see what we find on this before I flip the tape over. And here it goes. It's not tone sound, wait. Right? I'll try to line this up better down here. I'm going to put it all the way in this bottom track here, which will line it up better. I may have an alignment problem. Aha, uh -huh. there we go. Now we got something. Turn this down a little. Sounds like it has to go faster. Let me try that. That's a. I think that's a word. I think that's human speech. More than three quarters of a million men and women. Three quarters of a million. We got speech. We have speech. That is so wild. I would just have to go back again. Okay, here we go. Try that again. Try to get the pace right. Three quarters of a million men and women and the girls. Three quarters of a million of the men and women. Okay, here we go. I'm going to try to get it all in a straight line here. One quarter of a million men and women in the bell system welcome you aboard. There you go. Three quarters of a million of the men and women in the bell system welcome you aboard. All right, I'm going to have to look at some other pieces of this, but that, that seems to imply that this is some sort of promotional audio tape. Now, why would you have a promotional audio tape, a training tape? Uh, I'm, going to go down, I'm going to go down the line a little bit and listen to some other pieces. I won't bother recording everything, but when I find a new, a new piece, a new section with new audio, we'll, we'll figure it out. But that's, that's what it is. It's some sort of... Well, anyway, let me find a new spot on it. Okay, <clears throat> as you can see here, I have a real mess. So I don't want to ruin this. I don't want to get any kinks in the 
in the film. I want to carefully put this all back on again. And maybe I'll look around at other parts. But here's my theory so far. This is some sort of, it's a soundtrack for a video. It sounds as though it's like a demonstration type audio system for um, a film to go along with a film. 1963. The reason I say demonstration, it has the nature of something you'd hear at like, um, you know, Disney World or something like that. Um, like the World's Fair, like they're trying to excite you with the idea of, um, of some new technology. Um, I, think, I think now finally I have an answer to what this actually is, or pretty close to it. Uh, first of all, I just want to thank my friends Burge, Greg, and Dennis who um, suggested a lot of the experiments that I did here and um, trying to figure out and listen to the audio track which was the solution to to what this was. We all came up with a lot of different ideas and it turns out that um, all of those ideas eventually helped me hone in on exactly what it, what it was or at least what I think it is. This appears to be a one-off device used in the Bell Laboratories Pavilion in the 1964 World's Fair to demonstrate some new technology. In the descriptions page, I'll link, um, I'll, I'll, I'll put a link so that you can see a list of the various types of exhibits involving audio transmission, um, sound waves, that sort of thing. So this was a device for one of those exhibits inside of the pavilion, which I've shown pictured here. Anyway, that's my best guess at this point. I'm going to contact somebody who's, um, you know, a World's Fair historian and see. The exciting part is that if it is from this exhibit, if I'm, if I'm correct, then that means it's it's very possibly a one-off um, audio of it. This might be the last audio of of the exhibit from that fair, because um, this obviously was not meant to be. Um, this is this is obviously a one-off device. I'm pretty sure it's a one-off device. So it might have some historical interest to somebody who's um, into the World's Fair or Bell Laboratories or something.